Number 50, professional application. Two cars collide at an icy intersection and stick together afterward. The first car has a mass of 1,200 kilograms and is approaching at 8 meters per second due south. The second car has a mass of 850 kilograms and is approaching at 17 meters per second due west. Letter A, calculate the final velocity, magnitude, and direction of the cars. All right, um, so here's our little picture, right? We have the first car heading due south, right? We have the uh, second vehicle heading due west. And we know that after they collide right here in the middle, right, they're going to then stick together and basically move as one system. So what I'd like to do here is actually draw a little coordinate system kind of right at the point of uh, collision, okay? So let's just assume that they collide right here. So uh, in order to answer this question, uh, actually, if you read, you know, a little more forward uh, or ahead in the problem, in, in the uh, given question, it says this energy goes into deformation of the cars. Note that uh, because both cars have an initial velocity, you cannot use the equations for conservation of momentum along the X and the Y axis, right? So uh, the, the problem, the conservation of momentum is still, right, momentum is still conserved. All right, I think what they're trying to say is that we can't look at this um, analytically. We have to look at it more graphically first. I think that's what they're trying to imply. But uh, we still do have conservation of momentum. So if you were to envision it over here, right, we have one car traveling due south, okay, one due west. And where do you think after they make the point of collision, where do you, what quadrant do you think uh, the system will be uh, in? I think it's going to be in quadrant number three, right? Most likely after they collide, if you were to think about it, the system will probably move in that direction, right? And that should kind of make sense. So we know kind of we're looking for a vector in this uh, quadrant over here in quadrant three. So guess what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to look at this analytically, all right? And I'm basically going to, uh, remember, momentum is conserved. So whatever momentum the red car had, coming in to the collision, right, collision point, uh, there will be that same momentum after. So I'm going to actually, right at this point of collision, okay, I'm going to now draw the vector. I don't know why it didn't go on the line. And it's not going to, is it? There we go. So this, I'll call it the momentum after the collision, okay, um, of the second object, right? So I'll just call it P2A. So the momentum of the second object in red after the collision. And then I know I have, after the collision, right, the same thing here, P1A, okay? Now remember, momentum is conserved. So whatever P1B is, that should, meaning before the collision, that should equal P1A, okay? And then whatever P1B uh, is, whatever the momentum is coming into the collision, should be also the momentum after, so actually I can make those two equate, I can make those two relationships over here. I can say P1B has to equal P1A. All right, and P2A, uh, B I'll start with, equals P2A. It's just conservation of momentum. So what is P1B? Well, P1B is we know the mass and we know the velocity before the collision. So that's great. So I can plug, you know, I can just break this up into M1, V1, B. Right, and that should equal basically the same thing, right? M1, V1A, M1, V1A, okay? And then similarly over here with the uh, second vehicle, so it's M2, V2, B will equal M2, V2, A. Okay, so now uh, if you notice here on, in our picture, right, we have two vectors. Now how do we find the resultant vector when we have to add two vectors? Well, just the tip-to-tail method, right? I'll redraw the coordinate. Let me draw the x1 first. Okay, so I'll draw my x. Remember, this is essentially uh, P2A. And then I'm going to draw at the tail, excuse me, at the tip of P2A, I'm going to draw now P1A. It should be straight down, right? Because it's pointing south. So this is P1A. And where's the resultant? Right, resultant is from the tail of the original to the tip of the final, just right there. So this is essentially the overall momentum now. Remember, because they stick together. So I'll just call this uh, PA, okay? So how do we find PA? Well, according to this picture, we can use Pythagorean's theorem, right? 
or we can use this formula here, PA, uh, will equal square root of, write the sum of all the x's squared, sum of all the y's, sum of all the y's squared, right? But instead of, you know, knowing, I know my x is P2A, so basically it's P2A squared plus P1A squared, okay? Now, remember, what is P1A? Well, here's P1A, and we said it's equal to P1B. We know what these values are, right? M1, V1, B, we know what they are. And that's the same as M1, V1, A. So basically, right, if I could just find the initial momentum, it should also be the same as this. So I'm gonna plug in those values into my equation over here. So it's going to be now, um, <clears throat> well, I did that for one, it's gonna be the same thing for two, right? So here we go. So we got M2, V2, B squared, okay, plus, M1, V1, B squared. And that's it. All right, this would be the final momentum. So let's plug it in. Okay, M2 was uh, 850, right? 850. It was 17 meters per second. That whole thing is squared, right? Plus then 1200 times uh, 8. And that whole thing squared. And it just takes a square root. So PA will equal, let's see, the final momentum after the collision. Second square root of parenthesis 850 times 17 squared plus parenthesis 1200 times 8, close parenthesis square. And we get a value here of about 1.73. Uh, 1.73 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, times 10 to the 4th. And that is in terms of momentum, right? So uh, the momentum here, uh, right, it has, what are the units? Kilogram meter per second. Okay, now that, that's the final momentum, okay? So now remember, it wants us to calculate the final velocity of the cars. So if I know the final momentum, I can find the final velocity, right? That should be fairly easy. So remember, I'm gonna create my uh, other set of equations here. The momentum, oops, the momentum after the collision should equal, I'm just using this equation over here, P equals MV, is equal to the mass after the collision multiplied by the velocity after the collision. Okay, so uh, we know that this is about 1.73 times 10 to the fourth, right? The mass after the collision, remember, they stick together, so therefore you add the masses, so 1200 plus 850, okay, times VA, and obviously, look, you just divide out, right, the 1,200 plus 850, right, which if you were to do that, it should be 2050. Okay, so divide out the 2050. And you got VA. So let's calculate that. So divide it by 2050. You get about 8.46, right? 8.46 meters per second. So that's the final velocity. And they want to know the direction, right? So... Going back to the picture over here, the direction is the angle in here, right? So we can use tangent if we like, right? Basically, it's tan of P1A over P2A, right? Opposite over adjacent, all right? So I'm going to do that all at once. So theta is equal to the inverse tan of the opposite side, P1A. Okay, remember P1A, we have it, had it here. We had it here. It's this value, okay? So I'm going to do 1,200 times eight, okay, don't square it though. Divided by then, P1, uh, P2A, so P2A was this term, 850 times 17, so 850 times 17, and just throw that on into the calculator now. So inverse tangent of uh, 1200 times eight, divided by parentheses, 850 times seven, uh, 17. And we get about 33.6, right? So this is 33.6 degrees. And that is now, um, right, we can we can state what, what angle that's in reference to, right? We can say uh, 33.6 degrees, it is south of west, okay? So we can say S of W, south of west. All right, so that takes care of letter A. Uh, letter B, how much 
kinetic energy is lost in the collision. So remember, uh, we've done this a few times now. So I'll put letter B up here on the upper uh, right. Right, so kinetic energy lost is going to be the initial value minus the final value. Okay. Um, so here, so I'm just going to write K lost just to save a little space. So K kinetic energy lost should equal the initial. Now remember, initially there's two objects separate, okay? So it's gonna be one half times the mass of the first car times the velocity before the collision of the first car squared plus then half the mass of the second car times the velocity of that second car before the collision squared minus then, after the collision, remember they're one unit now. So that's gonna be minus, make that a little smaller, minus one half times the total mass, right? Um, I'll put T because we've got to add them together, times then the velocity uh, after the collision squared. So now basically we just have to plug in the values, okay? Um, so K lost, I'm going to factor out the one half. Okay, so it's going to be M1 V1B squared. So M1 was 1200 times 8 squared plus M2 was 850 times 17 squared, and then minus the total mass now, remember that was 2050, adding them together, and then the final, let me just see if I can squeeze that in, the final, eh, probably not, the final value of the velocity was, where is it? Uh, 8.46, right? 8.46 meters per second squared. So we just gotta throw that into the calculator. So let's do in the brackets, uh, first, and I didn't even close the brackets. Let's do in those brackets first. So 1200 times 8 squared, times 8 squared, uh, plus 850 times 17 squared, minus 2050 times 8.46 squared. All right, and then multiply that by a half. So we get kinetic energy lost of about 8.46. 79 times 10 raised to the, what do we got here, 4 joules. All right, so that's how much energy is lost in the collision. And as it said in the problem, that's the energy that goes into the deformation of the cars. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll help you out with the next question. Have a great day.